Um, the other question is um, because I saw a video of you mm. uh, talking about uh, meditation to uh, uh, n not so much meditate but uh, obs observe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So my question is if uh, you think I should meditate. Uh. If uh, regularly, because I, I also read a lot of books of Osho yeah. and uh, he, talk, he talks of, a lot about meditation. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I also try the, the, the other part to absorb, uh, uh, to see my, my, my thoughts and my emotions and <coughs> to try sep separate it. It's not very easy. We can look at both together, it doesn't take long. We can look at both of these points. If you say you've tried to observe yourself and you can see it's not very easy or whatever, okay, but you start, you are aware that thoughts come and go. Yeah. Yeah. You must be, you cannot be the thoughts that come and go, because if you yourself are a thought, when they go, you'll be gone. Yeah. But you're here to watch them come and go. So you must be something independent of them. Some perceiving uh, presence or 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 state that observes the coming and going of not just thought but feeling, emotion. That observes the difference between imagination and actuality, for instance. That understands and perceives our time sometimes can be perceived objectively, and that sometimes is totally subjective. You see? Yes. Like we were here, and um, sometimes here the time seems to go fast. It's like this. Because, I know, maybe it's so much fun or something. It's just the time is just going like this. And then we started this rice diet. <laughs> <laughs> and the rice diet slowed time down incredibly. You see, so you see, but it's subjective because before the time just seemed like it's just going. You know, we we do this and this, and it's like six o'clock we're having dinner. You know, or whatever. We start rice diet, and the days seem very long. <laughs> What's for lunch? Rice. Okay. Dinner? Rice. <laughs> Breakfast? Rice. For something, time, it's an amazing way. If you want to slow down time, start a rice diet or something like this. So we see that something is aware that even time is not, it's, it's, it's not, clock. time is not clock. It's very subjective and like this. So some, Presence, some force, some ability is able to observe all these things. Even the sense of personality or self, there's an awareness when you speak about your personality that you're speaking about something that can be perceived. So it cannot be the one speaking. And even the one speaking itself is also possible that you become aware that even that is also perceived. And if you really, if it really makes sense and connect with you, at some point, you find that there is a sense of presence, but it's got nothing in it at all. Who has come to that scene? That you still know you exist somehow, but as what you cannot say, because everything that is perceivable in life, from you wake up first thing in the morning till you go to bed in the night, whatever experiences have come, all of them have been perceivable. You are, you are aware of them on some level, they come and go, and you are still here. Who are you who watches all of them? Who watches your... who observe your own senses, sense objects, intention, desire, who observes memory, the play of intellect, the power of discernment, all of these things. Something earlier than all of them is there, but is it a something at all? And you can find this out. When you come to that, uh, that clarity of seeing, then the objects that are appearing in front of you have very little pulling power. 
you become pregnant with your own seeing. It's like somehow all that's left is just the presence, is just as a presence in which all things are perceiving. Has anybody come to this recognition? And in this presence there's tremendous peace and joy. And it's not in conflict with activity. Activities can go on. In fact, sometimes they go on better because there's no ego in it. So it is how long it will take you to come to that that completeness of seeing, which is not compared with anything else, which has no other association. Still you know I am, but it's not the same I am like personality. Personality itself is a kind of mask. You can say. So this type of introversion or introspection actually leads you to a natural state of meditation, without you even calling it meditation. Then, if you want to talk about meditation, I've pointed something very, very simple. That if you start only with just a sense of being, because it is there, then your mind says, How can I know it is a sense of being? That is a complete craziness. When you feel your your own existence, you feel the quality of I. That is your sense of being. It's the knowledge that you exist, the feeling I am. Something announces itself in the body. I am. It is self-aware. If you somehow stay in your natural self-awareness, or in that natural feeling of presence, or just existence, and don't put any images to it, nor combine it with any concepts, but let it stay just by itself. There is a vibration just by itself. It is not going somewhere, it is not coming from anywhere. It simply is, and it is humming inside this body. And if you somehow allow yourself just to be one with just the sense of presence. In the beginning, the mind wants to participate, wants to try to be the sense of presence. And because always we are holding the mind, the hand of the mind, so to speak, we bring it in also into this, and it turns it into a big effort, like, yes, I'm really trying to stay. And I say, no, 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 you are the sense of presence. Just rest with that. OK, and now what? No, no, and now remain as the presence. Yeah, but what should I do? Just stay as the presence. Something is itching, itching, itching. So now we got that. How can we use it? How can I make that make me more attractive? Or so? This is a mind. When you are able to just somehow remain self-conscious as that feeling of being, you can call it a meditation, but we don't have to. Meditation doesn't need to be called meditation. Don't call it anything. Just somehow you are in that self-aware state of being. And sometimes I say to people, if you can do this consciously for five or seven minutes at a time, then have to go for a walk or something. Because initially you'll try to do it mentally and you become tired. Actually, naturally, it takes no effort at all. It takes a lot of effort to be a person. It takes no effort to be the Self, because the Self is what you are. It is the Self that is behaving like a person. But in the mind we think, no, 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 I have to learn how to be that, and so on. It's all this concoction. And in that Self-awareness, all things are done well. Because they're not personal. You see. We don't need so many words. It's not that you have to describe it. You don't need it describing. You only need to be in the natural self-tasting of that. Just be that somehow. And it speaks its own language to itself. A language of energetically, intuitively, wisely, purely. It marinates inside its own self. Nobody else needs to do anything. There's nobody else there. It's just that. 
And as soon as that somehow develops a fascination to stay with itself, mm. tremendous joy arises, tremendous peace, a natural stillness, which doesn't have the sense that there's somebody doing it. It's just there. It's just what is here. There's nobody doing anything. That's all imagined. But it's a very difficult thing to take out of the psyche, the idea that I am somebody doing something. So for a while I say, OK, don't try to stop that. Just be aware that that can be perceived. Therefore, the perceiver cannot be that. That's much gentler and much more direct, and not full of conflict, this you can do. Either way, leaves you in the same pristine state. One is simply by, like I've just shared just now, holding on to the sense, the natural sense of being, the sense, I am. Nothing more is the most complete sentence. I am. Nothing more. And I am this, I used to be that, I want to be not this, just I am. The feeling of being. Stay with that feeling of being, without dividing or going off with some stream of thought or something. Be self-conscious of being. That's all. In the beginning, some rogue thoughts will come, and they will try and disturb that energy field. But if they do, and you feel some turbulence or something like this, don't register, don't, don't, don't clock it in. Just somehow, again, compose yourself in just a state of being, and remain as that. And other thoughts come like, you know, oh, you start to think of nonsense things sometimes. You're there, and you are. You start to think of shoelaces or something. So, wow, where did that come from? But don't waste time thinking. Oh my God, why shoelaces and not the shoes? Yeah. Don't get into that. Just see that it's a kind of nonsense that happens in the mind, and just stay again as the undivided, undivided presence, just like this. And gradually, you you somehow you stop hemorrhaging all this energy. It stays only in this, in this almost as though you're cocooned in silence and an inner space. This happens very naturally, and such joy, such peace, that no one has to tell you this is natural for you. You know, just like falling in love for the first time, you know it's love. You don't need some professor to come and tell you, okay, this one is love. No, you don't need this. You just know in your heart some things you know in a way that maybe you cannot prove. You don't have to prove. You just know you are the taste of that experience. It is the same with the sense of being. It is very simple. Meditation, inquiring, seeing that all things that you perceive, they are just sensations in consciousness, just a movement. If I ask you, ten minutes ago exactly, it's four forty-nine. It says here, uh, four thirty-nine. What were you thinking? You can. Yesterday, four forty-nine, exact time. Where were you? What were you thinking? What was your state? You can. If I had to accurately monitor what was your state, it would be the worst thing in the world for you. It will be the worst thing in the world for you, because you cannot even think two minutes ago what you were thinking. It's not real for you. And everything is like that. Just memory selects some things which are favourites, and save them, because you want to enjoy them more a bit later on, or something, like a, a doggy bag or something, you want to keep you enjoy later, like this. But by itself, naturally, the consciousness does not want to hold on to, and, uh, and preserve. It doesn't need to. <coughs> Whereas, when it forms itself into a person, when we have the idea of being a person, a person needs a lot of stuff to keep being a person. Now we got it all right, so you know it becomes easy, almost like a reflex. You're back into being person again. But in the beginning, if any of you can remember as a child, it was very difficult to remember that I'm Johnny, or something. Who are you, Johnny? It just didn't make any sense. 
it took a while. And as I said, when you were at the age, when you were trying to hold this thing and you couldn't get the body to... <laughs> you didn't feel that you had the body then. Only as the skill came that you would start to say, OK, I can do that. Then you start to look for Then you feel, I am the body. But it's not original to us. And the body is nothing wrong with the body. The body is very, very important for life. Very, very important, essential for meaningful existence. To have the taste of experiencing the body is important. But the body is not essence. It's not. It's not the ultimate. It's time, bo- time bound. Even. It's the aspect of ourself which is in duration. And mind cannot be consistent. The only place that that can be said of, that that simply is, at any time, any season, any age, that is as it is, can only be pure awareness. Not personality, not body. Everything is in a flux, everything is changing. Let it change, because that is nature, that is natural. That is.